And in my opinion, Algorand is one of the very last mid to large cap projects. We can safely say we'll have an explosive 2025 bull run. I'm gonna to go today over those reasons why, the fundamental aspects that make me bullish the technical aspects, but also I'm gonna shed light on the reason why it's down so much from where it once was. And it's pretty much built on a, and it pretty much foundation that no longer stands, okay? And it's a, a situation or a problem that I've touched on multiple times in different videos before as well. And I'm gonna to touch on why I no longer think it's valid. So before we start, why 43X? Why is this guy saying the other is on a 43X? Well, I wanna start off on coin market cap. What better place to start a crypto video and the good old coin market cap. And as you can see here, the current market cap is $800 million. What the hell is Kyron saying? 43X, is he nuts? The reason being is actually built on a complete uh, foundations from data, real data on the blockchain from the previous cycle, okay? I'm not gonna bore you with all the information. I've made this sheet completely free for all of you guys. It's on a different video. I'll link it down below. Of course, I made it for you. But based on this, based on market dominance and based on where the price is right now, literally like a week or two from its all time lows, we're not too far off, why can actually 43X? So it's gonna go a little bit higher. I think around $4, it'll possibly go to in the bull run, right? So it was, as I said, uh, at its all time low over here at 8.8 .8 cents less than a week ago. And if we click all, you'll, you'll see how far down we are right now. And again, this wouldn't have been so low if it weren't for the shocking news that came out that pushed it down. And again, I'm going to tell you why that news is no longer valid, okay? So the reason why it tanked was because a few months ago and a few months before that, there was a series of lawsuits from the SEC against centralized exchanges. I believe it was three, Coinbase, Binance, and Bittrex. Now, unfortunately, Algorand was mentioned multiple times in those lawsuits, or at least once in all of those lawsuits, right? It was one of the very rare ones that was mentioned multiple times as the SEC claimed these exchanges were trading unregistered securities. Again, Algorand was one of those. So of course, what does the market do? Well, it craps itself. It's like, oh my God, Algorand is gonna be classified as a security. It's gonna go through the whole XRP thing. I wanna drop it, right? And that's what happened. Effectively, what we saw here is a shakeout of the weak hands, transition to those of us, or those of you even, who continue to hold Algo tokens. Yes, I am an Algorand holder. So. You're gonna laugh at this, right? The SEC claimed Algorand was a security when it filed charges against crypto exchange Bittrex and again, following up with the other exchanges as well. The US regulator mentioned Algorand in fresh lawsuits brought against Binance in June, sending the token to historically low levels. Now, this no longer stands. Now, the reason why is because when you think about the next bull market being a speculation market, right? It is completely built on reputation. It's built on the fact that the average consumer, the average person, we call them DGENs, right? They can understand a project and they can see the inherent value in that project and then they want to buy it. But on the contrary, if they see a very surface level problem with it, in this case, oh, possibly the SEC is going to sue them, right? That's enough of a reason for them to dump it, right? But in this case, I do feel like that no longer stands simply because the minute, I believe this news is stagnant, right? Then the minute the minute that any sort of good news comes about Algorand, I guarantee you the narrative will flip instantly. This is what we've seen time and time again in other such circumstances. Guys, the news is old. If you think about it like this, this news hasn't been refreshed for many, many months now, right? A lot of other altcoins were also mentioned in those lawsuits, Cardano, Solana, so on and so forth, okay? A lot of other altcoins were. And so when you think about it, the price of Algorand right now is extremely undervalued for what it is. And I'm going to go over why it's undervalued with all the amazing fundamental aspects in a moment here. So what I'm trying to get at is this news is bound to break, right? This sort of plague that's held the price down for so long is literally held up by straws. It just takes a little bit of positive news and all the amazing updates to happen. You know, Algorand's been doing it through the bear market to come out of the bull run and then people go, oh, wow, this is an amazing project. It's not going to be sued or at least highly unlikely. And if it is, you're going to have Solana, Cardano, all these other larger projects in the eyes of the SEC first, right? Now, again, I mentioned they're upgrading the network. They've been doing things over the bear market, which indicate to me, like we've seen with Chainlink's recent pump built on its, one of its things is built in the bear market. Algorand has been nothing but building. We're going to go over some connections here, but as you can see, what they've actually done is reduce the block time to 3.3 seconds, okay? And it still offers instant transaction finality. What does this mean to the average person? It just simply means the minute you transact on the Algorand network, that transaction's final, guys. That's done. It's instant. It's instant. It can't fork. 
meaning you can't create a separate instance of the blockchain, meaning your transactions possibly pending or could be reversed if that fork doesn't win. And that's, I know, probably too technical jargon already. It just simply means, imagine you take your phone or Apple Watch to the store and you press beep, it pays for something, it's instantly done. There's no two, three day pending time, okay? Done. That way, Algorand can have lower TPS as TPS can go theoretically to 10,000 TPS. Some other people speculate upwards of 100,000 and it most definitely will scale to that in future. But with instant transaction finality, it doesn't matter. You can just process these straight away. The block time is down to 3.3 seconds. That means all the transactions in that block are irrefutable in about 3.3 seconds. So either way, guys, it's very, very important. We understand this because this is one of the reasons why it's widely adopted in the real world, okay? So one of the amazing aspects of Algorand, and guys, I've made a whole, I've made a 40 or 50 minute video touching on all this stuff in much more detail many, many months ago, almost 12 months ago now, actually. I will link it down below. It's a very, very important video for you guys to watch because it explains Algorand in the most amount of depth that you possibly need to understand it in. But this feature right here, Algorand Standard Assets, attests to the amazing, I guess, features that Algorand offers above other networks. Algorand Standard Assets are actually, you could almost think of them just like a smart contract or just like a token, right? You have, for example, Quant built on top of Ethereum. You have Chainlink built on top of Ethereum. You have, you know, Source of Swap built on top of, you know, Hashgraph just come to mind, right? But with this, it's the same thing, but built into the very layer one itself. These aren't dApps per se. These are freaking assets. These are tokens built into the very network, benefiting from a whole host of awesome features like being extremely secure, post-quantum secure. No computer in the world can ever corrupt the network due to a factor of speed, okay? And this is one of the reasons why Algorand is so impressive and not just this, but a whole host of other reasons. As I said, the founder is Silvio Macaulay. This guy is the equivalent of Satoshi Nakamoto when it comes to crypto, right? This guy has literally founded some of the core principles in a cryptocurrency or cryptocurrencies that are used in Ethereum, so on and so forth. A whole, pretty much all layer one networks, you might know the term verifiable random functions, VRF, for example, Chainlink uses these, right, to randomize uh, things for games or dApps, right? If they need something randomized, if there's a lottery system done through that, a whole host of other reasons and functions as well. But famously, he founded Zero Knowledge Proofs. You guys should hopefully know what ZKPs are. It's what Mina is fundamentally built upon. Zero Knowledge Proofs was founded and created by the founder of Algorand. I am telling you right now, if you are someone refuting the fact that Algorand is a quality project, again, give me a few more minutes here, but in, in essence, you're kidding yourself. And I'm in a, almost in a way, I'm a little bit glad of that because I get more tokens myself. I'm going to show you guys some more reasons in a second why this is so important. Again, this video isn't going to be designed to run through every which use case, just highlight the fact that Algorand is an amazing altcoin. Over here, one of the things that Silvio, the founder, is extremely big proponent of is sustainability, environmental sustainability. This is one issue I have with proof of work networks. And unfortunately, where the world is going to in the next decade plus is going to have this environmental focus on it, okay? This whole climate change narrative, whether you believe it or not, whatever the case, we're looking for sustainable options here. And investors, particularly when we think about institutions wanting to adopt technologies, they want to appeal to their investors, their actual, you know, uh, you know, equity investors. And to do that, what do they have to do? They have to have what they're looking for, right? ESG compliant things, right? Environmental is a massive proponent of a good project, in my opinion, right? Especially layer one network. So over here, designed to be highly energy efficient network from the start, partnering with organizations focused on sustainable use cases, offsetting any small emission gaps. They're carbon negative. They're carbon negative because they offset all their small emissions and at that, as they say here, they partner with organizations to further more sustainable options, right? To plant trees, to, again, further the development of an environmental world in, in essence, right? And again, I've seen the interview where he said himself, again, uh, Sylvia McCauley, I care about the planet. He has made it a very, very big thing. This guy's smart, all right? Again, he's, he's invented some core cryptographic principles that are used in crypto, matter of fact, he won the Turing Award, which is the equivalent of like the Emmy Award or the Golden Globe, whatever it is in cryptography, right? It's the highest prestige or the award you pretty much win, right? He's won it, 
Okay, so again, this is no joke. Now, I want to shed light on some of these things mentioned here by Aldar, right? Aldar is a proponent of Algorand over on Twitter. I'm going to leave his link down below. There's a whole heap of links down there, right? But he is someone to follow if you are interested in Algorand. What do I say? Five to 10 minutes of research per day per project. If you are interested or have purchased Algorand, you must follow him. You absolutely must. He will cut down your research per day by a hundredfold. We're going to touch more on some of these features in a second here. And so I want to show you this sheet here by Aldar as well. Now, this I know can look very confusing. You might look at this and go, oh my God, so much maths numbers. It's just freaking me out. Let me break it down because this is not just going to be a lesson for Algorand, a bullish factor for Algorand. Also, just a lesson in general about crypto that is highly misunderstood. I saw a very, very well-known influencer, like 100 more, 100,000 more followers than I have, mention this and he was wrong, right? This is something I used to think myself, okay? So... With altcoins and crypto, as we should all know, crypto is denominated, right? You can buy one Algorand or you can buy a fraction of an Algorand. That's the beautiful thing about crypto. You can't do that with stocks. Stocks are just one single share every time. You can't buy, you know, if one share is 100 bucks and you only have 99 bucks, you can't buy the share. You can't buy a fraction of that. You have to buy the whole unit itself. Crypto is, of course, different. For example, the smallest recordable unit for each of these altcoins is mentioned here. As you can see, for Bitcoin, it's called a Satoshi or a SAT, right? And one Satoshi or the lowest denomination you could possibly have in one Bitcoin is 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. Does that make sense? So you can buy one SAT, which is valued at one 100th, one 100 millionth of a Bitcoin. Does that make sense? So Algorand in this case is actually bullish in what Aldar mentions over here because as you can see, it's one one millionth of an Algorand token. For example, that's extremely low. That's one of the lowest you can possibly have in any sort of cryptocurrency. If we go over here to Elrond, for example, their lowest form of one EGLD token is one quintillion of an Algor of an EGLD token, right? Let's call it an EXA. ETH, it's called a WAY. You might have seen the WAY mentioned when you're doing transfers in Ethereum. That is, again, one quintillion of an Ethereum. Over here, near protocol, right? One quadrillion, right? So it's 10 to the power of 24, whatever that means, right? And so you'll, you'll find over here with Algorand that Algorand is only 1 million. And again, that seems crazy, but just remember, this is a very important thing. One issue that a lot of influencers and people in crypto get wrong is, oh, it's a low supply. Low supply is good. It's only got, you know, 21 million tokens. But guys, again, you can buy denomination. When Bitcoin goes to 100,000 Bitcoin, because there's a low supply, it doesn't matter. It doesn't create a supply shock because you're not getting new people coming in buying one Bitcoin. They're buying a dollar amount equivalent of a Bitcoin. So it just expands and contracts. What we're looking for here is when you have the whales come in buying a whole heap of an altcoin. Now, the reason why this is bullish for Algorand is because it is so low that you won't have that issue, right? There is a higher amount you have to buy. And again, we're talking fractions, fractions of a cent here. It's such a small amount. But again, there's limited supply with Algorand, only 10 billion tokens. Most of those, we're going to have like 20% left to go until 2030. When they're all out, that's it. It will create a supply shock because again, there is less tokens, uh, less denominations of the tokens. For example, in the future, Algorand might go to 20 or 30 bucks. In that case, let's just say the minimum is one cent, opposed to a similar altcoin with longer denominations. The minimum in that case might be one 100,000th of a cent still. Does that make sense? So it's very important, guys. The supply shock doesn't happen unless the smallest recordable unit is not that large, like Algorand, okay? So with that said, we also have Aldar over here mentioning a whole host of things that are really, really bullish with Algorand. Again, I could be here all day talking about this, but just bear with me. Let me touch on a few of these for you guys, okay? So first of all, Algorand, again, 10,000 TPS. It can process any type of transaction. The unique, you know, proof of stake mechanism is called pure proof of stake created by Algorand, meaning that you can only have one Algorand and you can participate in consensus. Very decentralized and in that, very secure. Why? Because you don't have a centralized amount of validators, block producers, because that means more danger. Essentially, that's keeping it extremely high level right there. Also, it's no forks, as I mentioned, it's fixed at 0.01 algo per transaction fee, which is again, really, really good for institutional customers. Over here, zero downtime since launch. It's post quantum secure. 
right? They have a hell of a lot of blocks and transactions processed. Again, the network is a sleeping giant at this point, as we'll look at in just a second here. And 2.8% yearly inflation from now until 2030. That is very low. And again, it's good to see 2030 is the shutoff point because that means from there, it's only going to go up. There's only a finite supply in there as well. Now, Algorand, this is where it really shines, has so many damn partners a lot of you are probably not even aware of, okay? Bank of Italy, Algorand serves as a public blockchain for bank and insurance guarantees with 250 billion euros looked after, essentially, right? That's the one way to put it. Now, of course, Bank of Italy, Silvio Micali is Italian, makes a lot of sense, right? Just like we have uh, Multiverse X, highly focused with Romanian government because the founders are Romanian. It sort of works hand in hand, but nevertheless, it is really, really good to see. You don't have uh, any sort of you know, government working with a cryptocurrency just because they can. There's definitely a good reason. They've also uh, partnered with FIFA as well. Over here, they've also partnered with Planet Watch, real-time processing of data. Guys, IOT. So when you're looking at a blockchain, one fundamental thing a lot of people disregard is what it's forming to become. People look at it as what it is right now. They don't have the vision to see what it's growing into. We've seen with other networks, HBAR, of the such moving into where I think Algorand will also move into, which is again, suited for what it's exactly for, right? Fast transactions, highly secure, that's it. And with that, you're gonna have lots of tokenization, IOT, uh, even be used for things like, you know, settlement for transactions, like actual genuine transactions. These things are coming and when we have some massive partners like the ones mentioned here, I also have missed quite a lot, you're gonna be blown away when in 2025 or 2024, it, blows up in price when you think to yourself oh my god i wish i bought it back then again i don't care if you don't buy the token or not i'm just literally pointing out the obvious here now over here again another bullish feature of algorand is something called light clients right what light clients allow algorand to do is for nodes to essentially deploy on other networks and through one of the features that celebrate macaulay created zero knowledge proofs then translate the information from the Algorand network back and forth from that other network like Ethereum. So they can have very fast, secure and private you know, cross-border transactions. Pretty awesome stuff, right? Also over here, they've created something called Vault. Vault is simply a data storage solution enabled through assigning expiry dates to transactions. So if you're a new node coming onto the network, you don't have to like Bitcoin or Ethereum download hundreds of gigabytes worth of the blockchain state as in what's occurred over time, you can just start. It's a lot lighter, uh, you know, with a lot less transactions and uh, size. So it works hand in hand. Now, of course, I mentioned to you guys, we're going to look at some more fundamental aspects. Guys, again, Algorand, 32,700,000 accounts on the network. This is around about half of what Cardano's is. But of course, Algorand in terms of size is far less than half of what Cardano's is. It's like, you know, probably close to like, you know, five to six times smaller as of right now. And also with the transaction history as well, if we click the six month, this is gonna be pretty much daily transactions. You can see Algorand in the last six months has averaged about four to 500,000 TPS per day with the, of course, average random spike. Now, if we click year to date all the way, over, or at least all over here, you'll see Algorand was once upon a time processing millions per day in the bull run. And I think that will happen definitely again, guys. Considering the fact that Algorand has literally been shot in the leg, arm, and chest over this last bear cycle, and it's continuing to process 500,000 transactions per day. That to me is quite an important thing to look at and one of the reasons why I'm also so bullish. Also, if we come over here and have a look at the developer report as well, Algorand is actually up there, right? Algorand in the last um, sort of 12 months was up here between 51 to 100 full-time developers, which is quite good considering it is competing with Arbitrum, Optimism, Genosis, so on and so forth. Of course, we have the odd ones above it. And if we come back over here, you know, we have a lot more in front of it, but to safe to say it's in the top, you know, 25 to 50 networks in terms of developers, definitely probably top 25. I probably misspoke there. So again, keep in mind, Algorand is most definitely here to stay. And there's just so many fundamental aspects that are gonna be a strong reason why that sort of foundation that's built upon a negative price sentiment it's going to be blow it's going to be blown past right in my opinion it's just not going to stand in the bull run and is one of the reasons why i will continue to buy algorand next stop is 100,000 algorand for me personally and i'm really excited so guys with that being said thanks so much for watching appreciate you all and take good care